listening to the They May All Be One podcast with new episodes every Tuesday, helping you stand firm in the faith and share the gospel with love. And now, here are your hosts, Shane and Holly Sands. Yeah, yeah, I got a little bit of swaying going, seasons changing. Today's episode, we're going to begin off with the three F's today, honey. What are the three F's? The three F's for today's program are... Are... Do I get a drum roll? I don't know if you can hear that, but <laughs> fall, football, and food. Woo! Woo! <laughs> yes. This week. A little bit cooler. <sighs> all three. I actually have joy yes. to talk about all three. You do have the joy, don't you? Yes, I do. Down ha- in your heart. Down in my heart. <laughs> Where? Down in my heart. I have the joy of speaking on all three of these to get the program started. And it will actually, it really fits well with our topic for today. But that's on another point here (laughs) in just a second. So, fall. Fall. Cooler weather. Yes. Cooler weather. And the angels sing. And we're starting to see a couple of the trees starting to turn color. Yeah. It's It's going to be beautiful. The groundhogs are big and fat now. They're about (laughs) ready for hibernation. (laughs) <laughs> so fall is around the corner Poor things. yeah i mean but it's it's gotten a little cooler yeah and we got some more cooler weather coming this week i know so fall fall number two football <laughs> once and now the first time in almost a whole year go ahead and play it now no go ahead yeah. <laughs> she won't let me listen to the sound bite she's okay my all-time the All-time greatest team ever, Nebraska Cornhuskers, finally won a game against a Division I opponent. I know. (laughs) It kind of melted my heart, too. Finally won. Those those are the key words, finally won. (laughs) Oh, yes, because last year, see, today's program does go along with it, because last year what I had to deal with, oh, my goodness, and even up to this year. So, my team won. Yay. Yay. The pajamas and the sweatshirt pulled me through. And no cap. No cap. Sorry, Dad. (laughs) And number three? Food. What about food? It is now getting into the fall time. Soup season. Oh, soup and (laughs) acorn squash and turkey and all the nice pumpkin and just just do yourself a favor. Do not buy the butternut squash soup in the little box thingy. It's not good. I thought it was okay. Blech. I know you didn't think it was, it was nasty. okay. But it tastes watered down and gross. We had our first pumpkin shake yesterday. Yeah, that was good. It was really good. Um, Shout out to Kendall's Grill. Yeah. They're really good. Yeah. And people, if you're in this area or you're not in this area, you can send them a message. Tell them, hey, you got a big shout out. So, yeah, Kindles Grill, their hot dogs, really killer. $1 hot dogs, and they are so good. Yeah, man. I love it. Get it with the works. Yeah. And then today, uh, we actually, while we were having our lunch, uh, enjoying that, I think, awesome you are disappointed in the <laughs> <laughs> very disappointed <laughs> in the the squash uh what was that butternut squash. butternut squash soup um we saw a thanksgiving dinner cooking show that actually man it was like oh it, it's like oh i can't wait <laughs> it's like good stuff so the three f's now that's going to lead us into uh, our our program for this week And before I get started, first, uh, a big heart uh, felt uh, to everyone down in Florida and in uh, the east coast of South Carolina who have been affected by the hurricane. Uh, Know that uh, we pray for you, that we seek the Lord's blessings upon you, that he will comfort you and send those uh, to help assist in your recovery. You know, devastation. And we're sorry that you guys have gone through that. Um, Just know that you are in our hearts. So um, may the Lord sustain you and fill your hearts with peace and grace during this difficult time. Amen. So 
today we're going to be talking about something I experienced all of last year uh, during the Nebraska football season, and that is disappointment. <laughs> if only I had a sound bite to go with that. <laughs> oh. No, so we're going to talk about disappointment because, I mean, I think in some way I believe that this topic is the most necessary topic to deal with because we all encounter disappointment. We all have things that we go through, and sometimes, man, we have the great highs, and then there's great lows, but when we talk about disappointment, you have to kind of envision in your head, what do you mean by disappointment? We're going to get into that because there's two ways of looking at disappointment, and one is not such a good way, and another is a okay. But what I'm going to do first is start off with reading a section of Scripture. Up until today, actually until about an hour ago, I hadn't really had a Scripture verse set for this topic. We had written the topic down literally, what, 12 weeks ago or something like that? I think so, yeah. yeah. So the topic, this topic and another topic coming up in the near future, we had written down but there was no scripture verse behind it. Well, about an hour ago, the Lord had put this verse, uh, this these verses on my heart. And so I'm going to share these, and then we're going to go to a commercial, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about disappointment. So the verse that's chosen for today is out of chapter 4 in Philippians, and I'm going to start in verse 11. Not that I speak from what? For I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. If you've been enjoying these podcasts, you can find much more on the website. Just go to www.thatthemayallbeone.org. Check out our blog page with articles from your host and others that we think would help edify, exhort, and encourage you in your daily walk with Christ. So man, disappointment. Disappointment, I think, comes from one of two sources. And one source, and I'm going to bring out the negative side of this first, and then we can get into the other aspect of it. But the one part of disappointment I think comes from is just a wrong attitude of our heart. Um, where we, we think of God as the giver, and we expect to get something from God. We want the gift, but not the giver. And I and I think sometimes in disappointment, we experience this when, you know, we want a job promotion, or we have an idea for for an athlete, or uh, me, you know, in in ministry. It's some. I mean, any area that can be, um, or you have goals. Maybe that's the right word, goals. And it doesn't happen. Sometimes I believe those that motivation, that disappointment comes from a heart where we expected God to do something for us, and it necessarily wasn't something that was in alignment with his will or in humility, understanding that it may not be what God wants for us. And so from that aspect, disappointment, I would challenge you, is a result, and there's really not any other way of putting this, and so I'm not trying to be harsh with this, but I want to kind of lay it out. In some respects, if the motivation is wrong, then selfishness is the key root of your disappointment. You've wanted something and you've desired it, and it hasn't been given, and it comes not because the motives were correct. 
that happens to every single person. So this isn't me trying to, you know, come down hard on someone. This is me trying to say that we're all called to examine our hearts. We're all called to examine the motives of why we do something. What is the what is the purpose behind the real root of what it is that we've come before God for, even expecting it. So, and if I can, that that would be something good for all of us to do when we have been praying and asking God for something in particular, and it doesn't happen when, or it doesn't happen at all. The first thing we do is check our hearts. Okay, are we asking from selfish motives? Mm-hmm. Are we are we throwing a tantrum? Why 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 can't I why can't I have this? Yep. And if we find that our motives are wrong, then we repent. Stop asking why and ask what now. Like I heard someone say once. But then, if your motives are right, that you stand in faith, Amen. that you're not moved by those circumstances, that you you don't you know you're not wavering between faith and unbelief, but you keep believing and trusting that in God's time. It will happen. Amen. You and I were talking about Abraham in that respect. Right. So in Romans, as you were pointing out, you know, it tells us that Abraham didn't waver in faith, but he kept growing stronger because the promise that had been given that all the nations will be blessed in him was to come from Sarah. And Abraham's looking at himself going, okay, I'm, I'm basically 100 years of age. Sarah, her womb is, is all but dead. Um, yeah, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's amazing, isn't it? That yeah. He, he didn't consider, and that's, that's what we need to learn. From, we, he did not consider his circumstances. Right. And it's so easy to look at something that's glaring you right in the face going, it ain't going to happen. Right. So his belief there, his like, okay, the circumstances don't look like they're anything good. Yeah. Um, good word there, honey. But instead he was fully convinced. Right. Fully now, and it doesn't mean that he didn't have moments of, I want to say, doubt, where he, he questioned in his mind going, gosh, is this, is this really going to happen? Um, believing God and sometimes asking the question because you're waiting on a time frame isn't necessarily disbelief provided that it's immediately backed up with no 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 i'm not giving into that temptation i trust god i believe god and i think you see that also fully on display with abraham when he was told to go offer his son isaac in the new testament we're told that when he went to go uh, go to the mountain to go to the place where god was going to show him He told his servants that they would be back. Now, Abraham fully knew what he was going to do. The New Testament reveals to us that Abraham was able to say that because he believed God could raise the dead. So that even if he offered his son in a sacrifice, that God would raise him from the dead and that God's word is true. That is the type of of faith that is the type of situation because you know that our emotions you know that our feelings you know that all of those things even grief all of those things can happen while we're in the midst of following god and walking faithfully with him we're fallen creatures uh we're our flesh is you know encapsulated this dead body by sin so it doesn't mean that we're not going to be encountering difficult emotions it it was like i was telling you what i was reading from isaiah 7 verse 9 it says if you are not firm in faith you will not be firm at all right you know without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to god must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder amen so we're you know from covid and everything that's gone on in the last few years it's been such a tumultuous time 
that disappointment has come around in so many different shapes, forms, and fashions. So now that we've talked about the one that had come from the selfish motives and now we're addressing and talking about the one that comes from the motives, I think of James when it says, you know, you don't have because you don't ask. And then you don't have because you ask from the wrong motives because you want to use them on your own selfish desires. But the one who asks should be asking in faith and not double-minded. That person shouldn't think you would get anything at all from God. And so from a personal standpoint, an experience I had with disappointment was my desire to go to Cape Town, South Africa, to preach the gospel. And I can tell you that it was very painful for me. Uh, From the time that I had labored with John uh, in Northern Ireland and actually then in the Olympics, I had a desire to go to Cape Town to join up with them and preach the gospel. And every year that I asked God to open that door and let me go through it, he shut it down right away. It was very disappointing. It was something that I I really wanted to do. It was something that I just, I, I had a desire to do. I believe the motives were good to preach the gospel, but perhaps even as I'm thinking about it, I'm saying it out loud, perhaps my motives, while they seemed to be good, also were selfish. This is something you want to do for yourself. It wasn't until five years had gone by that John approached me again, and then I requested of the Lord, and the door just opened up. He provided and opened up everything, and and it was just like that. So the disappointment that I, I encountered, it wasn't that I didn't ever believe that I wasn't going to go to South Africa. I was disappointed that it wasn't happening in the time frame that I was wanting. And, and I don't know if that can resonate with you out there, but sometimes God doesn't do things on our timetables. Like us trying to find a home. Yes. Um, we went to go, uh, if you guys haven't heard this or don't know it, the basic recap is this. Um, we moved down here to retire, to serve the Lord, to continue with United in Christ Jesus, but it was the place this was going to be and is our place where we're wanting to just, this is where we're going to settle down and end our days, Lord willing, on this earth. And we were we wanting a home. So came time after a couple of years getting settled down, and we go out and we start looking, and next thing you know, um, we really just get run through the ringer. Every time we made a, a offer, especially on this one house that had the views and everything that we were looking for. And we just, you know, the market, it wasn't, it's not right. And, oh gosh, like painfully bad. (laughs) Uh, But here's the thing. Still has a sting to it. (laughs) Yeah. When you think about it, but at the same time, the Lord has always put within my heart to say, you know, he's not someone who puts the carrot in front of your face, dangles it, and then takes it away and go, ha ha. So in my mind, I go, if that wasn't the home that he had for us, that had the views, that had the rural feeling, the country uh, fields and all of that, imagine what he does have for us while we're on this earth. I then think about what awaits us in heaven but it's just to have that contentment to rest in him. We still had to go through disappointment last year. Well, this year, I should say, because we went out again to try and look, and very quickly the Lord showed us it's not this year either. And it was still disappointing because you got all the things. You you have all the things in line. We had gone through our pre-approval process. We had done all the things that we were supposed to do, and we were just waiting at the door. That's it. And the door got closed. That is disappointing. And some of you can relate to that. Some of you can relate to job opportunities, children at school, those types of things. 
the fact is is that we all dis- deal with disappointment. What I was talking about in Philippians, the context of that was Paul was talking about, you know, people giving to him and serving in ministry. And he was like, not that I speak from want. So he, he's coming out and he's saying, I'm not asking you to, to give a gift for me because I have some need, but because of the fruit. And he was saying, I have learned to be content. That is perhaps the hardest lesson for any of us to deal with. I know it's difficult on me still, uh, especially serving with United in Christ Jesus. It has been a uh, request of mine since 2010 (laughs) that God will have us in circumstances where he will have us to rely on him. And I believe the ultimate goal is so that we, as like a weaned child, will rest in the Lord's arms waiting upon, trusting in, and caring for our Lord and knowing that he has said he would never leave us nor forsake us. Contentment in the midst of difficulty, I believe, is a sign of deep trust in Christ. It's being fully absorbed in the Word of God, in prayer with God, And I believe the more that you stay in God's word, especially in the times of disappointment and pain and sorrow, the more that you go to the Lord in prayer, the more he keeps you in peace. The more that the pain, while it's still going to be there, you can recognize it for what it is and still worship I found this one quote from Warren Wiersbe that said, the remedy for discouragement, or we could say disappointment in, in, in this episode, is the word of God. When you feed your heart and mind with its truth, you regain your perspective and find renewed strength. And that is so very true. Amen. Um, yeah, I think about First Peter, and I just it literally is popping into my head. It tells us that, therefore, those who also suffer according to the will of God shall entrust their souls to a faithful creator in doing right. Sometimes God puts us in situations where we are in pain. There's just no other way of putting it. We're in pain. Uh, Mental, spiritual, physical, you, you name it, we're in pain. And he's wanting us, he's growing us in faith. He's growing us to trust in him, growing us to be steeped in his word and trusting that his word is truth because he is truth. So sometimes we're put in situations where we're feeling the effects of a dead sinful flesh and we're still called to trust in God. And that really... I think on the other side of that disappointment comes joy, comes celebration. Because I think sometimes we're allowed to go through disappointment so that we can rejoice and see the faithfulness of God. Me too. I think when we, when we suffer disappointment, we're focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah. We're focusing on everything that's screaming to us um, contrary to the word. And so we get discouraged. Yep. We cave into the why questions and the why not questions. Yep. And if we, instead of focusing on the word, which would renew our strength, which would encourage our hearts. I mean, David said, you know, that he encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. Are we doing that? Are we encouraging ourselves in the Lord by focusing on his word, by meditating on his word, where we get that strength. Mm. Yep. And I, w- I would add into that, then we start praying his word back to him. Yeah, exactly. And like, Lord, fill me with praise. Because if I don't praise you now, if I don't praise you now, when would I ever praise you with truth and integrity? But if you fill me with praise now, then even when it's really good, 
that it will shine forth even that much louder. But how much more when I'm in despair or I'm discouraged or I'm disappointed that I go, Lord, fill me with praise that I can worship you. Amen. So it's our hope that when you look at disappointment, the first thing that you do is you examine your heart. If you examine your heart and you know that you, the motives for the reason you have asked are good, like in James, they're selfless motives. There are motives that are that have a purpose in helping and a purpose in building up the body of reaching the lost, uh, caring for your family. If you, I don't think there's going to be one hundred percent anything that doesn't have a little bit of in individuality yourself. But what I'm saying is that the overriding emotion focused foundation of the reason you've asked or petitioned the Lord on something or while you're even in a cer certain situation is a selfless one. And you can truthfully say you can come about and you can say to the, to the extent that you're able that your motives are selfless and right according to the word of God, if you can say that, then the correct response is worship. In the midst of all the difficulty of the disappointment, and disappointment will come to us, it, it's without question that we who are still on this side of heaven will encounter disappointment. When it does... Look to the one who never disappoints. Look to the one who has promised to always be with you, to never leave you, and never forsake you. Focus upon the gospel and the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Truly focus on the resurrection, for that is the assurance that God has accepted his sacrifice and that you have truly forgiveness of sins and peace with God. And when you focus on that, then regardless of the circumstances you're in, you can have peace. Till next time, take care. Thanks for joining us on this week's broadcast. If you'd like to hear us speak on a certain topic, please visit us on our website at thatthemayallbeone.org and click on the contact page. We'd love to hear what's important to you in your current walk with Christ. If you're on Facebook, give us a follow at TTMABO Podcast. That's the acronym for That They May All Be One Podcast. Or you can click on the link on our website. Please make sure and share with others if this podcast has been a blessing to you. Also, don't forget to rate us on your podcast app and hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for listening. And remember, Always line up your thinking with the straight edge of Scripture.